Hey, good morning, welcome Just back. Okay, today I would like to pass on something that might help a few of you out there, that you might be being driven mad by not being able to prime up your dry braking system. Now, if you've got a brake system on your bike, front or rear, or even a clutch system, they're hydraulic and they have to have fluid in them to work, we all know that, and we bleed them through to make sure there's no air left inside them. But before you can bleed them, which is a process of opening a valve at the bottom and pumping the fluid through to express any air bubbles, there's no bleeding takes place until there's fluid in the system in the first place. You have to prime it before any bone dry system can even think about being bled. So here today, I just wanna show you how to prime up a dry system, how to get some fluid into it to start with so you can actually start bleeding it up. Especially when it's a twin hose system where you've got two calipers at once bleeding all the way from the top. Sometimes the most difficult way to bleed up, most have a T-bar in the middle and a splitter. That makes them a little bit easier, but it's still the same principle to prime it up in the first place. So here in this video, how to prime up a bone dry system and get it bleeding. Really easy with no special tools. I'll show you. Right, okay, completely bone dry as you can see, nothing in there whatsoever, nothing in the pump, the hoses are dry and the calipers at the bottom even more so. There's nothing in them, not even a residue because they were completely rebuilt from scratch with new pistons and seals. So this whole system is a perfect candidate to show you this really easy trick. Now all we're gonna do is use gravity to prime it up. I'm gonna to top up some fluid in here first. Once that's topped up, take the hoses off the bottom and then start letting physics work for us. I'll show you. Okay, ready with the jug. Now, I often get asked the question, when bleeding breaks, which caliper do you start on first, left or right? Well, it depends very slightly on your personal system. If like some of the Triumphs, you've got a piggyback system, which is where they run a brake hose down to one caliper, and then a hose straight out of that, a continued system over the wheel to the other. That's one system. So you start on the one nearest the master cylinder, the one that you come to first, open them both and you bleed it all through in one go. When you've got twin hose system, the longest hose is always the one that I bleed first. So in this case, that's the left, the furthest away. That way you've bled the longest hose up, it's easier then to do the shorter hose afterwards because you're not pushing air up and down the same piece of hose. If you've got a splitter, again, it doesn't really matter which one you do first, but I always, as a matter of habit, start with the left-hand caliper. So now, in this instance, we're not gonna bleed the caliper, not gonna open the bleed valve, not gonna get involved in any of that. What I'm gonna do is the same as you do on a car. I'm gonna take the brake hose off the caliper and dangle it over a jug, literally allowing gravity to bleed from the top down that hose and prime it up. It's really easy. Okay, hose off at the bottom, dangling over a jug to catch the drips. Now we're just gonna use the lever, just wiggle it in and out gently, and you'll see little bubbles coming up into the reservoir fluid. And this little piston, this little thing that lives inside the master cylinder, it's tiny, and it only moves them backwards and forwards, tiny amounts. So it's only feeding tiny little amounts of fluid down at a time, so you need some patience. Just wiggle that lever backwards and forwards. You're not doing a full pump of the lever. It's not necessary, it doesn't achieve anything. Just little wiggles of it, just to coax the fluid down and gradually, slowly but surely, as the bubbles come up, fluid's going down. Very simple. So just be patient and keep tickling that until you start to get fluid flowing down and you'll start a siphon action and it'll start draining out the bottom. Like that, ever so easy, isn't it? Very simple. Let the weight of the fluid eventually siphon its way down. It does work, trust me. But if you're having a problem and you can't get that to siphon and it just won't work, it's entirely possible that certainly if you've 
rebuilt this master cylinder and you've used a little silicon grease to lubricate that brand new seal into its bore, it's possible that a little tiny blob of grease has got in the valve inside there and it's just bunging it up slightly. Easiest way to overcome that, because it's, it's just a little plug seal and gravity won't overcome it, all you do is take these two hoses off the end and put your finger over the end of the actual master cylinder and seal the hole and then squeeze the lever in, which will burp out the air against your finger, that'll come out of the way, reseal it with your finger, then let the lever go. And as the piston pulls back, that causes a vacuum which draws that fluid down and it will suck it through and you'll prime the master cylinder itself. Then put the hoses back on and then it certainly will drain down over, what was that, 15 minutes or so? So there we are. And now I've done that side, let's do this side. Right there, as you saw, that took three quarters of that reservoir of fluid just to prime up the hoses. It's a lot more fluid than you think, which is why there's no way on this earth you are gonna bleed, in the traditional way, all that air out the bottom. You're just chasing the tail, you're squeezing it up and down, and it's just gonna pressurize and depressurize and drive you insane all day. Don't waste your time, simply gravity bleed it. Once that's done, now we can traditionally bleed them up in the normal way. And as these are fully rebuilt, nice, fresh, fully moving calipers, they should bleed up in a trice. So let's get them done. Okay, little top up, just up to the top of the glass. Traditional method, hasn't changed in a hundred years. Two or three pumps, open, close, release lever. Two or three pumps, open, close, release the lever and it's just a repetitive process now to push that fluid through the caliper itself. There we are, nice solid braking system. Now, this video wasn't about bleeding brakes because I've got lots of videos about that. This was more about passing on that trick of priming up a dry system. We get messages constantly from people who fitted new brake hoses, which are bone dry and empty, and it just takes them an age and they write to someone, anyone in despair to say, please help me, I can't bleed this up, what do I do? Well, there's a few methods, as we've shown in the past. You can take a syringe, you can inject fluid up from the bottom, and that'll get enough in there to prime it and you can bleed it normally. You can buy all manner of little tools to do the job for you but this method doesn't need anything. You just prime it up using gravity and nature. A little bit of a siphoning action going on, a little bit of gravity as well. Drop those hoses off the bottom and tickle the lever and it just drizzles through. Lovely. So all of those little methods are things you have to resort to when it comes to bleeding or priming and filling up a brand new system. If you're gonna to upgrade to braided hoses, it's something you'll definitely need. Now, I'm gonna say two other things that are very important about this. The first is the pistons in the calipers. And that is to make sure that you push the pistons right back into the caliper before you start priming and bleeding it up. You can prime the hoses up to here all you like, but if those pistons are sticking out and hanging out into their normal operating position and there's an air gap behind them, you won't bleed it up easily. It will take you a very long time and it will just be a nightmare because as soon as you start pushing the fluid in, it's got great big springy squashy cushions of air inside those sockets that you can't push out. Well, you can eventually, but it just takes forever. Better still if they're pushed right back so that the piston touches the back wall of the socket that it lives in, in the caliper body, and there's no air gap there. You've eliminated it. But if you're gonna do that, make sure that you clean the gum line, that exposed ring of piston that you see, it's sticking out between the caliper body and the pad. Clean that off completely before you go pushing them back, otherwise it'll cause your brakes to bind because it'll jam up against the dust seal inside there and cause you even more problems. But I'm assuming that you've done this because you've already cleaned and resurfaced your calipers, so they should be clean anyway. So pistons right back, they'll be easier, much easier to bleed up. 
So one final word about fluid itself. The old argument between dot four and dot five fluid. If you're gonna use a complete strip and rebuild of your braking system to upgrade to dot five, you've replaced everything. So you've also replaced your brake hoses as well. They're all brand new, brand new pistons, brand new seals, every piece of rubber internally, every spring, all the pistons, all replaced. There's still the castings. You've got the castings of the caliper themselves. There's lots of that. And of course the master cylinder and inside the reservoir. All of that has been soaked for many years in dot four and there will be a residue. So if you're gonna do it, make sure that any remaining parts that you're gonna reuse in your rebuild, that you wash them in something like propyl alcohol to make sure that there's no residue can come into contact with what was there before. Because as we all know, mixing dot four and the proper dot five silicon stuff can have catastrophic results. It turns all lumpy and bungs up your braking system, which can be quite dangerous. So that's it. So join me in the next one. We're gonna start some more of these servicing videos. I'm gonna do the drop away test on the Harley Davidson. Yeah, something quite important. It's a way of checking the health of your headstock bearings. And it's something also that Harley Davidson recommend in the service manual. So I'll show you that in the next video. Thank you for watching. Take it easy, ride safe. I hope this helped you. I'll see you next time. And I keep on